Welcome to NOAA's Science on a Sphere. My name is John Armour. I am the uh, acting director for NOAA's Office of National Marine Sanctuaries. And right here to my left is my good buddy Richard Beavers with the Ocean Agency. And uh, our, our groups have been working together for uh, several years now uh, to bring some of the special ocean places uh, to, the, to everybody. So many of you may know that way back in 1872, the United States Congress designated the first national park. Anybody know which one it was? Anyone? Anyone? Take a guess. Yellowstone. Yellowstone National Park was designated by the U.S. Congress in 1872, about a little more than 140 years ago. But that decision to designate that park was thanks in no small part to a photographer. A photographer who took uh, pictures of the geysers and the canyons of, uh, of Yellowstone. And uh, prior to that, uh, the uh, United States Congress had heard stories of canyons and geysers, but they didn't believe them. But it took a photographer and those pictures to actually convince them uh, and to, for them to believe that these things existed. And so, not unlike 140 years ago, our oceans and our special places in the ocean face a very similar challenge today. It really is about access, and it's about knowledge and um, bringing these special places, the National Marine Sanctuaries and the Marine National Monuments that our country manages, uh, bringing those to people. Um, because without pictures, uh, they, uh, they just would not be able to experience these places. So NOAA, in collaboration with the Ocean Agency uh, and Google, uh, has been uh, working for several years now to try to bring these places to life. Because like that like the, it's, like the Yellowstone, we know that pictures and videos can do way more than, than just words. And so um, I'm going to turn you over to Richard here in just a minute. And so Richard can take you on a dive and show you some of the technology and some of the imagery that we've been able to uh, get uh, working together. So with that, Richard. Thank you, John. Yes, sir. So, like John said, we have been working with, with NOAA on this program since, since uh, 2013, when we did our first expedition, which was in, in Florida. And I'm going to show you some of that imagery, imagery in a second. Um, but what we did on this um, was really a, a pilot, because we wanted to reveal all of the National Marine Sanctuaries. Um, and since then, we've been to several more, and we're growing this um, all the time. So I'm going to take you to four National Marine Sanctuaries uh, tonight and one monument. And then we're also going to do a world first, which is a world first group dive, which we'll finish off with. So let's start off with, with Florida Keys. And we, we did this expedition as part of a global survey of coral reefs. And um, that was part of the Excel Catlin CV survey, which we've gone to 26 different countries over the last four years with this project. But I was blown away when I got to Florida, which was our first joint survey with NOAA. And as you can see, we jumped in the water, and there were these amazing statues, first of all. This is Christ of the Abyss, um, one of the most dying sites in the world. Um, we then went off to have a look at some of the reefs in the area. Now, Florida Keys and the National Marine Sanctuary, this is a place called Molasses Reef. And it's actually showing one of the most endangered corals. But I think this Im image is very important because this coral used to be everywhere around the Caribbean. But over the last um, few decades, that, those, all these corals have pretty much disappeared. And it's been, become the first coral to be listed as endangered species. So it's gone from being one of the most common to being one of the most rare finds. So these places where it still exists are hugely important, and it's hugely important to have them protected. Then we went off to another site, and what's amazing about Florida is there's so much hidden underwater. Um, 
This is the only underwater research station in the world, and it's an incredible place. It's Aquarius Reef Base, and what you find is over here you can see a diver just climbing into the reef base, which is through a wet door. And so you stick your head up through this wet door and you go into this research station and you can stay there underwater and have unlimited diving. Um, the funny thing about this research station, I'll actually go back, is there is an outside toilet, which you don't really want to have to use in the middle of the night with all the sharks around. Um, but you put your head up inside this Aquarius reef base and because it's compressed, so you're 20 meters below the surface, you sound like Donald Duck, and you have to have these conversations for the next two weeks um, sounding like Donald Duck because of the compression. I'm now going to take you to another area. Before I showed you one of the endangered corals, um, this is a, a place um, still in Florida Keys where um, Ken Niedermeyer, who you're seeing in the picture here, is growing corals and growing resilient corals. And this research is incredibly important at the moment. Um, there's been a lot of talk at this event about the coral reef crisis and the third global bleaching event. What we really need to understand is how we can repopulate our reefs, especially when conditions are brought under control. And this is the kind of research that's required. But again, it's, it's happening hidden from view. And what we wanted to do with this program was to be able to reveal these kind of sites to the world. Now I'm going to take it somewhere totally different. And this is Thunder Bay, which is another national marine sanctuary. And it is literally littered with wrecks. And I've been finding out about some of these wrecks. The magical thing about Thunder Bay is these, these wrecks get preserved. Now this is one of the shallowest wrecks, which I need to get my notes on these ones. The American Union, which was a three-mast schooner that sank in 18, uh, 1894. But most of these wrecks are far below the surface, and there's teams of NOAA divers going around um, really to do the research on these wrecks, and again to reveal them. Now this is a dark image which just shows you the kind of atmosphere that these divers work in and they go down and do their surveying. Now this particular reef, uh, this particular wreck was the E.B. Allen which collided with another, um, another ship in heavy fog and sank down to about a hundred foot depth and so now these divers go down and carry out their surveys and it's really hardcore diving. As you can see they've got several twin tanks on them because you can only go, go down for a very limited period of time and it's very technical diving. There's even the dives where you can go inside the wrecks and again it, it's a dark image this one but this shows inside the Grecian which was which actually sank in 1906 but it sank under unfortunate circumstances. It actually hit a rock in a river and they decide to refloat the ship. And then they decide to take it away to re, um, repair the damage, but unfortunately it got a leak on the way and it sunk in really deep water and there was nothing they could do about it at that point. So this is another one of the, the wrecks that's preserved in Thunder Bay. Now the team from NOAA has collected all this imagery. What we've been doing is working with Google to provide the cameras so that teams that are already going out and researching these locations can start to record them and re reveal them using this modern technology. Now the next place we're going to take you to is one of my favourite places in the world. and We've got a few of the, the, the great team that we worked with in American Samoa. Now American Samoa is a magical place. And we're taking you first off to a place called Rose Atoll. And there's a few um, different reasons why it might be called Rose Atoll, but I like to think it's because of this rose-colored algae that covers a lot of the, the corals over there. Now this is a very, very special place. And we had to get special permission from, from parks um, to get, even get onto the land there. 
we had to freeze our clothes so we weren't going to be bringing any insects or anything that could upset that environment. And then we were allowed to go diving in these locations and reveal them in Google Street View. Now this is one of the first places um, which we revealed. Um, and I believe this was the first National Marine Sanctuary in American Samoa. And it just goes, shows this beautiful environment. But most people are never going to be able to get to American Samoa. And 99.9% .9 of people don't dive. And even those that do only get to see a handful of places. So we've now got the technology to be able to share this information and engage people with these important um, environments. And this is, uh, excuse my pronunciation, Tafue, Tafue Cove. Um, but a magical place where you hike down um, through the, the, the canopy, as you can see, and get to this incredible bay. But my favorite place on this trip was going to see this coral. I've never seen anything like it anywhere in the world. This coral is over 500 years old, and it's in a place known as the Valley of the Giants. It's really remote. So you have a, a long, and we, in our case, very, very bumpy journey to get out there. Um, but when you do, it's worthwhile. Um, this coral is arguably one animal, and it's grown for 500 years. But few people know it exists, and few people will ever get to see it. I was just incredibly fortunate. This is me taking a 360 image in a 360 image. <laughs> I'm just going to take you back to Rose Atoll because oh, I was going to show you the above image of Rose Atoll because we do work very closely with Google. The reason why we were able to go out to this site was part of, it was part of a bigger survey where we were revealing above and below and trying to get that connection between above and below. And this is Clever, who was part of the team that went out there and recorded above while we were underwater recording below. And now you can jump in from the beaches and see exactly what's there in an area that's so protected that it's virtually impossible for the everyday person to get to. Now the last area I'd like to take you to is back here in Hawaii. And Hawaii is, is very unusual when you jump in the water here. You've got these unique colors and and it's a very special place. When you consider that it is this giant mountain that raises up off the ocean floor, with the life that's around here, it's a very important place. And this is one of the local, um, this is Hanoma, is it Hanoma Bay? Yes, so a very local a snorkeling spot, um, which was one of the first places we revealed in, in Google Street View. And again, we trained our NOAA divers who then went off to the, the big island. And this shows the a typical scene on the big island, some incredible coral formations over there. Um, I'll spin that around. And we're only just starting to process a lot of this imagery. Now, with the Excel Captain CV survey, we've actually been able to go to these locations and record them at scale. So we have our underwater scooters and we've been motoring along the reefs, and we've been recording these environments to then have a baseline. And over the last year especially, we've been going back to that baseline to be able to record the effects of the coral bleaching. Because Hawaii's really been in the epicenter of this coral bleaching event that's been happening. So on the Big Island, we've been back there before, during, and after. And really, we can start looking at these impacts at scale. <laughs> And here's another shot from the team with the cameras that we train them to use, just showing these typical environments. But what you often find in Hawaii is you have these boulder corals that are very resilient to wave action. Because it gets pummeled, um, you get a lot less of some of the other corals that you see on other reefs. So everywhere we've gone, we've seen a very different environment. And it's certainly very special to come to each environment and see how different they are. And that's another thing we wanted to communicate with these, these projects. A coral reef is not a coral reef. 
they're all different and they're all special and they all need protecting in different ways. And this one, I was only just trying to learn the name because of the announcement made the other day. The Papahano Mokoakea. How did I do? <laughs> uh, the monument. And these are one of the first shots that we got back from the team who've just recently been out there. And what I love about this shot is it shows the fish populations, which you should be seeing on, on reef environments, and that crystal clear water. It is a very special place and it does need to be protected. And we will be getting a lot more of this imagery coming in soon. Now the last image is really, uh, again from the Exo Catalan Seaview Survey. It shows some of the bleaching that we recorded here back in 2014. Now in 2014, it was the start of the third global bleaching event and it's still going strong. The previous coral bleaching event, global coral bleaching event, lasted about 12 months. This one's still running. And it's hit Hawaii twice already, and it's already predicted with about 60% probability of bleaching again this year. So it's really unprecedented, this, this event. And we recorded it for the first time in Hawaii, and that really was the inspiration for traveling around the world to record this bleaching event using this technology. But what, for me, this image does is, is just show the importance of imagery in communicating events like this. They are very much out of sight and out of mind. And it also communicates the importance of marine protection. Because it's the marine protection that allows corals to recover. And these global impacts are increasing all the time. And that's why the National Marine Sanctuary Program is so critically important and it's so critically important that we engage people with these environments. Now the last thing I want to do today is, is a world first. And normally I ask people to um, put their phones away, but if everyone can get their phones out and get on Facebook and look up the NOAA National Marine Sanctuary page. And if you scroll down on that page, we're going to do a world first dive into a tide pool. I actually called it a rock pool earlier, but um, uh, I was told no one in America would understand what I was talking about. So this is, we crawled into this, this tide pool and photographed what is one of the National Marine Sanctuaries. So this is the Olympic Park National Marine Sanctuary. And has anyone managed to pull that up on their screen? And can you turn it around? Oh, if you tap, double click on it. Oh, it's, are you on the National Marine Sanctuary page? There must be someone who can work with this Facebook, this new Facebook. Excellent, so here's a demonstration. If you can all try this at home, you've now got a virtual reality magic window into a tide pool in the Olympic Park. Oops. Let me see. Excellent. So I'll pass this around. If anyone else wants to have a look afterwards, you're very welcome. So that was your virtual dive tour. Now, all this imagery is already in Google Street View. So you can go and drag your pig man and jump in the water at any one of these locations. And over the next few years, we're looking to reveal as many of these locations as we possibly can. I'd like to say a big thank you to uh, the team at NOAA. And a big thank you to Google and our, our sponsors, XL Catlin and CV Survey. But I hope you've enjoyed your virtual dive. Anyone any, got any questions? I will show you how to get that in a second, shall I? If you bear with me a second. I'll do that while I'm answering any other questions. Is there any other questions? Actually, that was in Lanakai um, Beach. So the, it's, it's very turbid water. So the visibility was about three meters. 
on that day. So it's all an effect of, of being underwater with the coral bleaching, which is sort of lighting up the water in a certain way. It's not an impact of coral bleaching, that's just the corals. Yes. That's a very good question, actually. And um, in all our street view imagery, there is, well, there was the diver in, and we've actually had to crop, crop them out. And then we stitch over to get rid of it, otherwise everyone would get bored with Christoph, who's mainly the cameraman. Um, the camera I've got in here, you can take the shot because you're taking four different shots. And these are the cameras that the, the NOAA team are using. So we go down with the tripod, put it down, and take four shots as we're swimming around and then we can stitch it all to create a full 360. Oh. Sorry. I will put it in your Facebook very shortly. <laughs> Any other questions? Thank you. Well, thank you. Thanks, everybody.